this video, we're going to talk about array concepts in C. Arrays in C are a lot like lists in Python, but we'll see that there are some important differences. Most of these differences are because C is a lower level language that gives us fine-grained control over the use of memory. The trade-off for this fine-grained control is that arrays in C are less convenient and sometimes more error prone. Here's an example of declaring an array in C. The first thing to notice is that we have to store the size of the array separate from the array itself. Then when we declare the array, we tell C what size the array will be. C will allocate the memory for the array based on the size. So in this example, C will allocate exactly enough space to store four integers. No more, no less. Unlike lists in Python, arrays in C cannot grow or shrink. Because the size is stored separately from the array, when we want to iterate over the elements of an array in C, we have to use our separate size variable. We can't ask an array for its own length. Let's look at how we can initialize arrays and access them in C and compare that to lists in Python. To initialize a list in Python, we use square brackets. So this says that the variable a gets the list containing the integers 1, 3, and 5. To initialize an array in C, we have to declare it first. So this declares an array a that stores ints, and then initializes it again to store 1, 3, and 5. Besides the type declaration here, we use curly braces in C, and that's the other difference. To access an element of a list in Python, we use square brackets. So this says x gets the nth element of a. We use the exact same code to access an array element in C. To access the first element of a list in Python, we have to remember that lists in Python are zero index. So a bracket zero bracket is the first element of a list in Python. And it's exactly the same in C. Now accessing the last element is a little bit different. Remember, lists in Python remember their own length. And that allows the Python interpreter to work backwards from the end of the list. So in Python, we can say a of negative 1 to get the last element. Because arrays in C don't store their own size, the compiler has no way to automatically index from the end of the array, as in Python. So to get the last element of an array in C, we have to work backwards from our separately stored size. As we've seen, arrays have some superficial similarities to Python lists, but there are a few key differences. Arrays in C can only contain elements of the same type. For example, we can have an array of ints in C, but cannot easily create an array that mixes ints and strings. Technically speaking, Python lists are said to be heterogeneous, while C arrays are homogeneous. Arrays in C have a fixed length. Unlike lists, we can't easily make an array longer or remove from the middle of an array. And as we've seen, unlike lists, arrays don't store their own size. So let's do a practice exercise now. Here's the main function of a C program. And we initialize the size variable to store 7. And then we declare an array a that contains seven different numbers. Then we call the count evens function. And because arrays don't store their own size, we have to pass the array a and its size separately so that the function knows how long that array will be. Finally, we print out the number of even numbers found in that array. Here's a skeleton for the count evens function. Notice again that we have two parameters, one for the array of ints and one for the size of that array. Pause the video now and see if you can write down an implementation for this function. Feel free to rewind if you need to review anything. You did pause, right? Good. So here's our solution to the count evens problem. In the first line of this function, we declare two variables, count and a loop index i. Then we initialize count to 0, saying we haven't found any even numbers yet. And then in the for loop, we loop from element 0 up to 1 less than the given size of the array. So here we're using the size parameter that was passed in. And for each of those elements, we check if it mod 2 is equal to 0. And that's a way to test whether it's even. And if it is even, then we increment the count variable. And finally, at the end, we return count. 
Now, a clever C programmer might take advantage of the fact that there aren't actually any Boolean types in C, that they're just represented by integers. And so we could replace this whole if statement with an increment of count, where the value that we increment by is actually a Boolean expression. So this nums of i mod 2 equal to 0 will have the value 1 if nums of i is even, and it'll have the value of 0 if that's odd. And that's a way to turn that if statement into a single expression. One last point on passing arrays to functions before we wrap up. Under the covers, C passes arrays to functions by passing a pointer to the first element in the array. Some people take advantage of that and write their function headers like this. We encourage you to be explicit about array parameters, but I wanted you to see the alternative syntax so you'll recognize it when you see it. That does it for this video. Until next time, I'm Kurt. Catch you later.